Hello again, this is Destructicon from Malwarewolf. If you're here, you're probably interested in our VirusTotal API lookup script. This allows you to either use a hash or multiple hashes to query VirusTotal using your API key. Now the best use of this script is going to be if you're dumping a large hash set into a text file and you want to check all of those against VirusTotal and get an idea as to what's malicious, what's not malicious. I guess I should go ahead and let you know what the requirements are for this script. Uh, you will need requests. It is a Python lib. Uh, you will also need Python, obviously. And you will need your VirusTotal API key. If you don't have that, uh, you can just hit up VirusTotal.com and log into your profile. And once you've clicked your profile, uh, once you've clicked your profile name, you can click the My API key option. If you're unsure how to get your API key, please check out our foremost script video. Uh, in that video, I give you a small demonstration of logging in and getting your API key. Okay, now that we've got everything we need, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we run this script. first thing that we'll do is we'll check out anything that is in the help. Uh, we see we have the input, the output, the hash, the key, and the unlimited. So the two required options here is output and key. You have to be able to tell it where you want to dump information to and you have to have your API key otherwise this won't run. Now it's technically not going to run properly if you don't have a hash or an input, uh, but the script will technically run. You're just querying virus total for nothing. The other thing to mention is the unlimited key. Now, the unlimited key is technically not unlimited. If, as long as you have a large uh, number of queries that you can make every month, um, there are costs that go around that. But uh, if you have no idea what this is talking about, probably don't have a key that's pretty large. You probably have a standard key, which is four lookups per minute. Uh, so if you do have the four lookups per minute, do not use the unlimited key. Otherwise, it changes the sleep timer to one second, and it will perform a query every second. This was originally set to zero, uh, but the issue that came up is it was skipping some of the hashes. So decided to just keep it a second until we can figure out how to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and perform a query against a blank hash. Uh, the example hash inside of the help file is actually a blank hash, so you can use this yourself and it will come back with something. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to do a VT check with my hash. Mark that sucker up. And I'm going to define my output of just output.txt. Why not? And now I'm going to define my key. Now I'm not going to record this portion where I input my key, but the next thing you'll see is the output. Okay, and we're back. We see that a whole lot of data just got dumped over. Um, everything that you're looking at right now is the different scanning engines and uh, just telling you whether or not they detected some kind of issue, whether it's malicious or not. The last line tells you whether or not it was identified as malicious. Uh, now this is actually part of the response code from VirusTotal. Uh, if it does come back as malicious, it will give you the amount of hits. But let's go ahead and take a look at what is inside the text file that gets created. This would be your output file or the name that you identified. So after double clicking, we see that it's just telling us the same information that's in the console. It says the below is the identified malicious files and it says that specific hash is not malicious. Let's go through and see what happens when a file is actually malicious. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And we will clear everything. OK, so for this specific example, we're going to do two things differently. First, we're actually going to use an input file instead of just declaring the hash. And we're also going to be using a SHA-128 hash instead of an MD5. This is to show that you don't actually have to strictly use an MD5 hash to query. All right, so I'm going to say, hey, that's my input text. I'm just going to dump this in here. So instead of declaring the dash H for my hash, I'm going to do dash I. Say I want to do the input file. Dump it back out to output.text. And use my key. And we're back. OK, so just finished up running all of the SHAs uh, in our input file through VirusTotal. Luckily, we only had one of them. Uh, you will be able to do any combination, so you can have SHAs, you can have MD5s, you can have SHA-256s, all in there, all together. Uh, the only thing re we request is that you separate them line by line, uh, but that's pretty standard, just making a large hash set. So our response from VirusTotal is that it's, it is a malicious file. Let's take a look at what it looks like when we open up the output. So again, nothing too special here. Uh, it is very clean. It just says this is what SHA it is, it's malicious, and how many scanners detected it as malicious. So we see that there is a 13 count. Uh, it's safe to say that it's something you probably don't want on your network. Keep in mind, if this is adware, that might be something that you guys may be a little more relaxed on. Uh, but I know in our current environment, we try and uh, keep everything as clean as possible. So that's all we got for you. Uh, we hope that this was useful in some way. Uh, we do have a couple of ideas uh, we want to try and work on as far as on this script. Uh, we would like to be able to make it so that your API key gets written to a file, and then it can just query that file instead of having you to retype that API key every single time. Uh, that is one option that would be pretty cool. Another option would be to flag which one of the things you'd like to print out uh, from the actual response from VirusTotal. So if you're interested specifically in one of the scanners, maybe you can flag that scanner as, I want to see whatever this uh, responds with. Uh, that would be a great way to check, for example, maybe you have a uh, Symantec in your environment, and even if this thing is popping off as malicious, maybe Symantec is saying, hey, I didn't find this file. Uh, so those are just a couple of ideas that would be pretty cool that we can throw into this. Uh, but yeah, if you have any other questions, please contact me at uh, destructicon at malwarewolf.com. Uh, please leave me any comments you would like. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Bye.